I don't think anyone really wants to be like wasteful. First of all, people aren't aware of the impact that their choices have. So that's the first thing. But two, I think there's all these barriers to taking the next step. Like they don't know where to start. There's this preconception that it's too expensive or that it's really hard or that it's time consuming um, or that it's like this elitist thing. And again, I think my role is to really dispel those, those preconceptions and, yeah. and show that this is really easy. It's really approachable. And there are so many external benefits that you wouldn't even think of. Right. Welcome back, everyone, to the School of Greatness podcast. We have Lauren Singer in the house. Good to see you. Good to see you. Welcome, <laughs> welcome to LA. Um, glad you're here. We've been trying to make this happen for a while. We got connected through mutual friend Lacey, who couldn't Lacey. be here. I know. Uh, who's such an amazing soul, sweetheart, and a friend of ours. So shout out to Lacey. Thanks for the introduction. We miss you. Yes. Um, and we've had some good times. I, I went to Brooklyn. We connected there. I went to your store, which was a really cool store yeah. in Brooklyn. Been to a semi dance party. Semi dance party, dinner, lunch, brunch, walked yeah. around Brooklyn with a bunch of group of people. So we've had some good, those good moments mm -hmm. where you like you get to connect with people, even though we've only hung out a few times. It's like when you spend like three or four hours and like doing different stuff, you really bond. Yeah, especially in Brooklyn. In Brooklyn, especially. So um, thanks for coming on. I'm excited to, to talk about the stuff that you've been working on. You've become. You've been blowing up online with your your story of zero waste, yeah. and this is what everyone knows you for right now. I remember, I think I had a photo with you when I was in Brooklyn, and some guy that follows me was like, "I'm obsessed with her." Right? He's like, "That's like my dream woman I would marry." Like someone who's like, "Oh my god, thanks. Someone I'm who's so like single. beautiful, and someone who's like into the environment and activism. It was like everything. So I'm sure you have a lot of male fans uh, watching and listening as well. You're out here now, holler so hit her up, yeah, holler at her, yeah. <laughs> DM her. Um, but tell me, why did you get into this zero waste? What is zero waste? Why did you get into it? So I think zero waste means different things to different people, but for me, it's always meant as an individual not sending anything to a landfill. So um, not throwing anything on the ground, obviously, no littering, no putting anything in a trash can, but I do compost. And I recycle, but as a last resort, because recycling takes a lot of energy and a lot of water. Um, and this all kind of started when I was in college. Um, I didn't have a family that was into... Are you good? Okay. Yeah. yeah. I didn't have a family that was into like sustainability or being environmentally conscious. So everything kind of started when I learned about hydrofracking. Mm -hmm. um, so what's hydrofracking? It's a process of extracting natural gas from shale formations and uses you know, tons of water, toxic chemicals, and has put a lot of people out of their homes, um, out of work, and has been just a huge social issue, an environmental issue. And I became really passionate about it. I was protesting against it, went to DC to lobby, and it kind of just consumed my whole life. And I studied environmental science at NYU. and was always kind of proselytizing about sustainability. Mm -hmm. Like I was telling everyone like, mom, don't drink non-organic milk. Right, like, right. Dad, you have to recycle. Like kind of telling people what they had to do and everyone just be like, shut up. Like stop <laughs> right. it, like I don't care. Um, or like no one wants to be told what to do. And, and that's kind of what I was doing. But I was learning all this stuff that was so exciting and so mm -hmm. empowering and like, you know, ways that people could change their lives when it comes to like impacting the earth and no one wanted to be told. Um, and so my senior year of college, I was in the last class that you have to take as an environmental studies major. And there was a girl in my class that every day would bring in this like big plastic bag with a plastic clamshell full of food and a plastic fork and knife and a plastic like thing of Gatorade and a bag of chips and she would eat everything and then just like throw it in the mm -hmm. trash. And I'd kind of sit there like <clears throat> staring at her being like, are you really gonna do this? Like, are you gonna throw this away? And just like watching her and kind of like giving her eyes. Um, I'm sure she thought I was absolutely crazy. And I would just judge her for being this person who studied environmental science and then would make so much trash. Um, and I went home one day after class to make dinner and I opened my fridge and saw that like every single thing in there was packaged in plastic from like my lettuce that was pre-washed to my milk, which was in a plastic container, mm -hmm. like everything. And I had this realization that, like, oh my god, I've been 
protesting against the oil and gas industry for two years at this point now. It's been like my entire life. And I looked in my fridge and saw that all of this plastic, like I was supporting and, and subsidizing this industry because one of the biggest products of the oil and gas industry is plastic. Really? I was supporting them through my everyday consumption habits. Mm. And I, I started looking around my apartment and I was like, oh my God, all my beauty products are made of or packaged in plastic. All of my cleaning products, like all of my kitchen utensils, my clothes, because fast fashion, so much of it is made from synthetic fibers mm. made from plastic. And I was like, <clears throat> I'm such a hypocrite. You know, I was getting mad at this girl for making plastic trash with her meal, but like my entire world was made of plastic. And I made a decision in that moment to stop using plastic, which obviously isn't like an overnight thing, right? If you think of walking into like a CVS, every single thing in there is in plastic, right? right? So I was like, okay, I want to transition away from plastic, but I couldn't just walk into a normal store and like find all my beauty products. And so I started doing research online of like how I could find beauty products plastic free. And it turned out that the way was to, to make them. Really? So I started making my own beauty you products. You couldn't buy anything plastic free. I could not find anything plastic free. So I started like looking up recipes to make my own beauty products and some of my own cleaning products. and. Through that, I found this website about this woman who lives in Mill Valley, California, who's living a zero waste lifestyle. And I had never heard of anything like this. Um, when I read more about it and I learned about it, I was like, oh my God, this woman does not send anything to a landfill. This is the coolest, most empowering thing that I've ever heard in my life. Mm. Because I thought, you know, like obviously I really cared about environmental sustainability, was talking about it all the time, was protesting, but it was the first time that I realized that. I had a way to align my day-to-day -day actions with right. the things that I cared about. And for so long, I wasn't doing that. And so going zero waste was really the way that I could live my values. And, mm. and five years ago, I made the switch and it's it's, it's been crazy. amazing. It's crazy. And now is it easier for you, for people, anyone to buy things without plastic or? I mean, that's, that's kind of my ago? life's work, really. Because when I, when I learned about zero waste, um, you know, she was the only person writing about it at the mm -hmm. time, the only person talking about it. And so I later started my blog, Trashes for Tossers, to document my journey of, of reducing waste and open up the conversation in a way that felt safe and non-confrontational. Because remember I was saying, you know, like so much right. of the conversation of environmentalism is like, you're not doing this or like, you're screwing this up. And it's so, or you're part of it's the like problem, the blame or, game. Yeah. yeah, and and that to me, like, I realized that by just, taking everything on myself and being like, okay, I'm a part of the problem. What can I do to, to change this and share my experience through taking control of my waste um, and talking about my experience from my perspective right. that it made people feel comfortable to have a discussion around waste. And so I started Trashes for Tossers and, and I learned that, you know, I actually didn't even have to tell someone like you should stop doing this like through hearing my story and through learning that I was living a zero waste lifestyle and through knowing that there's an option for the way that we can live our lives people were like wow I'm doing a pretty shitty job here right, right. like I want to make some changes yeah and so I just shifted the entire way I approached talking about issues so is recycling not enough then in your mind for people I I'm trying to make it obsolete. I'm trying to... You don't even need it. Yeah, I think packaging is kind of antiquated. I think if we invest in multi-use alternatives to single-use packaging, then we can eliminate a ton of waste. So through like my, one of my businesses is Package Free and it's aimed to provide multi-use alternatives to single-use disposable products that are made of predominantly plastic so we don't have to keep mm. investing in and wasting energy and resources and money on these single-use items and ultimately, you know, we save money and we're healthier because plastic is toxic for the human body. Right, right. What's an example of some of these things that A uh, simple have? one that's kind of in the bubble right now of conversation is a straws right plastic straws so many people oh, are yeah. against them they're being banned in tons of places there was a whole like celebrity campaign around it yeah. like, a couple months ago mm -hmm. like Lonely i whale. suck or something it was like mm -hmm. i'm not straws sucky suck. yeah yeah i'm not sucking anymore <laughs> yeah. or something yeah and so we offer the first thing that i say is like you don't need straws obviously yeah, most people don't need the them thing. but if you do feel that you need straws for whatever reason we sell three alternatives made of bamboo silicone and stainless steel that can last you forever and that are recyclable or biodegradable at the end of their life so yeah, it's yeah. an investment that has a positive impact not just on the environment but on your health because plastic mm -hmm. straws leach toxins 
Yeah. And what about food? You know, that's been the biggest thing, and people are consuming food every single day yeah, through plastic so containers at the store. It's interesting. When I started going zero waste, I was in college, um, a senior, <clears throat> and I didn't know how to prepare food or make a grocery list. And so, like, I would find myself at the library until three in the morning, starving, having to eat like <laughs> absolute garbage. And then I'd feel bad about myself. I would waste money. I would feel unhealthy. You know, like. The, the dialogue around most college students, right? You just mm -hmm. feel like shit most of the time. And through going zero waste, I eliminated the parameter of packaging from my, my purchasing options, right? And so I realized what happened was that I started eating really, really, fruits really and well. And, yeah. yeah, fruits, vegetables, bulk grains, nuts. And I felt like I had never felt in my life before. Like I was sleeping better. I was, mm. my weight had stabilized. I, I just had more energy and I realized that most of the food that we buy that comes in packaging actually isn't food, it's a food product. It's packaged, there's preservatives, there's um, ingredients in it that aren't even natural. Yeah. And so by eliminating packaging altogether, one, I was saving money because we pay a premium for packaging, but two, I was healthier because I was eating real food. Yeah, for packaging and the brand on the mm -hmm. packaging, right? Yeah. Huh. And so where can you go then for that for that type of food? I guess you can go to the grocery store and just get non-packaged yeah, vegetables I mean, in the produce section. Most conventional grocery stores have both options. There's like a lettuce that's just a lettuce hanging out on the <laughs> shelf. And then there's the pre-washed, pre-cut lettuce in the packaging. And I am perfectly capable of, of cutting and washing right. lettuce. And, and I actually really like that experience of seeing the entire mm. product. Um, so you just don't put it in the plastic bag. That yeah, I'll just put it in my cart. Like there's this fear of fruit and vegetables like touching each other um, that people have, and uh -huh. they have to like put everything in its own bag. And I'm like, that's that's interesting. Like why? Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I'll just like let all my fruit and vegetables touch each other. <laughs> it's like scary. <laughs> um, and then I'll bring. But if you're afraid of that, I have these. Um, organic cotton reusable bags that you can put your produce in that I sell at package free and then you can just wash them afterwards. Um, and then it's funny because so many people will buy organic produce but then they'll put it in a plastic bag. I'm like that's that's interesting. Mm -hmm. So most conventional grocery stores will have you know the unpackaged produce and then the packaged produce so you have a choice there but I've traveled like pretty extensively everywhere and I've never had a problem finding a natural food store or a mm. farmer's market or right. a grocery store where I can get things that aren't packaged and so that's kind of one of the first things that people say like this is impossible they don't have this where I live and and I would have said the same thing when I started you know I didn't even know in New York City it was possible to live this lifestyle but it just takes a little bit of mm. time and research yeah. and I realized that there was this whole world available to me where I didn't have to make any trash where I could eat healthier where you know I was saving money and it was right in front of me and I just didn't know. Mm. What if there's something, you're in LA right now, you go to your favorite grocery store, Air mm -hmm. One, and there's like a smoothie in a, in a plastic jar that you just really wanna have. Do you, mm -mm. do you try that sometimes and just like, yeah, once in a while we'll do it, or are you just like, you know what, there's a better alternative that I can go make it and then I bring my jar and have them put it in the jar, mm -hmm. how does that work? I mean, one of the bigger things is every decision that we make when it comes to consumption has an impact that's larger than the product that we're looking at. You know, things are manufactured. If it's a food product or a textile product, mm -hmm. it comes from farmers, which, you know, have their own life and their own social issues. And, and I try to ask myself the question, is this worth it? You know, is the impact that this consumption decision that I'm about to make, is it worth it? And when I look at a smoothie in a plastic container, you know, I ask myself, do I need this? Is this necessary for my happiness? Mm. Is this necessary for my life? And 99.99999% of the time, it's not. And that's something also really beautiful about this lifestyle. It's made me re reevaluate what is actually necessary and what makes me happy. I, I constantly ask myself the question before I'm about to consume or buy anything is, you know, does this make me feel happy? Does this make me feel beautiful? Does this mm. make me feel special? Do I feel like the best version of myself with this or because of this? And if the answer is no, which it normally is, then I, I don't even think about it again, yeah. it's done. Wow. 
And so when you do want a smoothie or something at a, a store, do you bring in your own containers in or how you've got the mason jars, yeah. you've got the... so I'll bring like a, a <clears throat> container that I refill. Um, I always have a little container of like a fork, knife, spoon, chopstick, straw in my bag. I have really? a coffee cup that I carry with me, my reusable water bottle, um, and I'm just prepared. So I, I think about where I'm going. If I'm coming to LA, you know, I'll, I'll look up some stores that offer things in bulk or I'll look up places where I can bring in my own container and I'll, I'll have a dialogue with the person that works there like, hey, I know this might sound really weird, but I, I try to live a life where I don't create any trash and I, I don't, I prefer not to use plastic. Is this okay? Um, can you refill my, yeah, yeah, refill my thing? And they're usually like, oh my God, especially here. They're like, oh my God, that's so cool. <laughs> like, I love this. This is awesome. Like, I do yeah. this too. And it's just all about having a dialogue and not being yeah. demanding. But like, you know, as a consumer, we can be demanding, right? We're, we're exchanging our money for goods. Right. So like, I think it's our right to ask for and demand what we want. Mm, interesting, yeah. And, and what about with clothes and everything else like that? Do you... I buy everything secondhand. Secondhand, there's mm -hmm. nothing new. Um, I'll buy underwear, new, organic cotton. Um, but besides that, like even, you can get like really cool secondhand bras, which sounds weird maybe, but like, I don't care. Um, yeah. And it's all about like, <laughs> You know, the, the slogan of, of package free shop is give a shit. And like, for me, like I, when it comes to being judged for decisions that I'm making that help to have a positive impact on the environment, I just don't give a shit. Yeah. You know, like I do what I'm doing and I don't care what people think because I know that it aligns with what I believe in. That's great. And even if it's been in a packaging before, originally, mm -hmm. even though it's secondhand, it's still because you're I recycling that? I consider reusing or? something that's already in the waste <clears throat> stream. So like gotcha. everything I buy is secondhand. And, and another cool thing about this time that we live in is the internet makes it so easy for people to consume things secondhand, you know, through the sharing economy, whether it's Craigslist or through, you know, websites like um, Poshmark, where you can buy mm -hmm. secondhand clothes for both men and women. Oh, wow. um, it's, it's so possible to get everything reused and you save so much money because of it. Yeah, wow. How many people in your life had, have you influenced to do this that you thought would never go kind of, well, I guess how many people have gone completely to the level of your waste-free I mean, status of like zero cheating on this ever? And then how many have surprised you who've, who've brought this up? I don't even think of it as cheating. Like, I think, you know, every positive step is positive. Every right, positive right. action is positive. And so, like, if you're doing one thing even and you, like, make waste in the rest of your life, like, I still consider that something positive. It's a step positive. forward, yeah. And so when it comes to, like, my friends and family, I've never asked them to, you know, be zero waste or reduce their waste at all. But I think they see that, you know, like I've started three companies, like I feel happier and healthier. I'm a better version of myself through living this lifestyle. And I think through inviting people into my life in a way that feels safe, like they've adopted these things, right. you know, one without of my best judging, friends. Right? Without yeah, I would never judge anyone for where they're at because I cared about environmental sustainability, but I was like wasteful as hell. Right, right. And so like, who am I to judge or critique anyone for where they're at? Um, you know, my, my job, I feel like my role is to be a champion of my own beliefs and my values, be consistent, and then invite people into my life if they're open to it. And if they're yeah. not, then like, I love you for who you are. What if you're dating someone who had just like plastic everywhere, plastic container food, and I just mean, like, would you be like, eh, I can't stay with this person, or? Everyone that I've dated hasn't been zero waste. But, yeah. but they're it, conscious about it. Yeah, I mean, it comes with the territory, right? Like, I live this lifestyle. This is yeah. who I am. You know, it's like take it or leave it. Yeah. Um, it's like being most, with a vegan. You know, it's yeah. like you're probably going to eat less Except meat. Except vegans will always tell you that they're vegans and that you shouldn't eat meat. No, I'm just right, kidding. Right. I love but vegans. you probably eat, no. you'd eat but, less meat if you're with a vegan. No, you might just be more totally. inspired to. I think, you know, everyone wants to have a po more positive impact. I don't think anyone really wants to be like wasteful but I, I think first of all people aren't aware of the impact that their choices have so that's the first thing but two I think there's all these barriers to taking the next step like they don't know where to start there's this preconception that it's too expensive or that it's really hard or that it's time consuming um, or that it's like this elitist thing and and for me like again I think my role is to really dispel those those preconceptions mm -hmm. and, yeah. and show that this is really easy it's really approachable and there are so many um, external benefits that you wouldn't even think of right. because of living this lifestyle. It's, been a e it's easy for you, you think? Or do you feel like you have It to is. It's so easy for me. Um, life is e more simplified too, you like think? Like a million percent, a million fold. How so? I mean, I just have fewer things. So first of all, yeah. that helps. Like my home is easier to clean. I can leave with less stress. Um, you know, 
I save money, so obviously that takes a financial burden off of the equation. Mm -hmm. um, I'm more conscious and deliberate about my purchasing decisions. I'm more conscious and deliberate about mostly everything in my life. And um, I've been able to just be happier. Um, and I think that just makes things easier. And I think also my attitude going into it was what helped. You know, I didn't say like, I'm going on this crash diet and I'm eliminating all plastic from my life. And if I screw up, then like, you know, everything is done and I'm, I'm a horrible person. And I went into it and I was like, you know, this is awesome. Like, I'm so down for this. I'm going to start and I'm going to do one thing and it's going to be like, amazing, I'm gonna integrate it into my routine and then I succeed and then I'm gonna do something else and if it's not perfect, I'm gonna try again. And it was that like, it's I gamified it kind mm -hmm. of. I made it like, I congratulated myself every time I did something that aligned more with this goal of mine. And and I think like, that's the attitude you have to take when, when making any change in your life. Right, right. Have you inspired others to be completely zero waste or? Waste I mean, free, I started out like with a, blog being like really the second person who was talking about this in a in a public space yeah. and now there's zero waste stores all over the really? world there's like people blogging about zero waste like there are tons of people there you know my following has increased on social media my blog views have totally increased there's brands wanting to align with zero waste there's uh, so much happening in wow. this space now um, and I have people write to me every day being like this totally changed my life and I don't think you know you know, the only thing that I did was show people that there's another way to live and give them the tools to apply that to their own life. Mm. Now, when you had, when you first did this assessment in your, your space, mm -hmm. and you realized there's plastic everywhere in the fridge and in your place, are you, did you say, okay, I need to get rid of this plastic originally and yeah. recycle it or do something with it? And then never again will plastic touch my space type mm -hmm. of, how do you get yeah. rid of the plastic? in the most efficient way? There's a few ways. So one, you know, if there are still things that are usable, um, you know, I wanted to eliminate plastic from my life, but there are people that would like to use anything, regardless of what material mm -hmm. it is, and there, there are places that would openly take donations of any type because there are people that don't have things in general. And so, first of all, I like to look at everything and be like, is there someone else that could use this or benefit from this? And so I donate it a lot. Yeah. Um, but with like beauty products and, and any other plastics that weren't recyclable, I learned of this really amazing option where it's a company called TerraCycle and their their motto is really like recycle anything. Mm. And so you can send them your, your toothpaste containers, your beauty product wow. packaging, and, and they'll recycle it. Um, and so that's, I think, the best bridge between living a conventional waste producing lifestyle and making zero waste. Um, Send it to that company or yeah. anything. They'll recycle anything. I'm pr they will take pretty much pretty anything. Much anything. Yeah. Wow. They even take cigarettes and like diapers. It's pretty cool. Wow. So you don't yeah. have to throw stuff away is what yeah, you're saying. There, you there is always an option. I, I found that there's always an option. You just have to do a little bit of legwork to make it happen and to figure it out. What about all the, the haters that you get online? How do you deal with that personally? I mean, one, I don't indulge in negativity. Like I read a comment when, when I first started doing this, there was a big <coughs> article that came out about me, which kind of like put zero waste into the mainstream conversation because it was shared pretty widely. And, and there were people who were like, this is bullshit. Like this girl isn't real. Like she's just doing this for attention or whatever. And, and like, first of all, I didn't care because that's not true. And, right, right. and I got a little bit emotionally affected because like, you know, I, I'm doing this for myself. I'm doing this because I want to live in a world where people are living their lives in, in harmony with nature, where we're not, you know, screwing up the planet for everything mm -hmm. else. We're the only creatures on earth that can destroy the planet That's for true. everything else. And I'm not down with that. Yeah. Um, so when people say negative things, first of all, I like delete the comments because it's my world, yeah. you know, like it's my social media and like, who are you to come to my house and, you know, break mm -hmm. my things. So I, I dispel like a lot of those yeah. negative comments by either like sharing a post that, that proves it wrong or I'll just delete it. And maybe like some people would say that's screwed up or whatever, but I think like, if you're gonna have a discussion about it, about something, anything at all, like have it be positive, have it mm -hmm. be productive, like don't tear people down for trying. Right. Um, so for haters, I say like most people that have a negative reaction to what I'm doing, they see something high level, zoomed out, and they don't try to understand what it is. Yeah. And I think anything that's alien to people, for a lot of people is something that's scary or dangerous, and so they just like, 
push it away altogether. And, mm -hmm. and for me, like zero waste is a collection of tiny little steps that are really easy that together have a large scale impact. Yeah. Um, that's cool. And so for haters, I just like don't indulge it or try to be yeah. like, you know, come into my world, see what it's really sure, like. You know, sure. it's, it's actually really easy and awesome. Yeah. Yeah. You know, like my family used to make fun of me so much and like mock me. And I think when they saw that I didn't care, you know, they were just like, like oh, let's try this out ourselves. Like, yeah. We're compost. I'm, my family compost now. Like wow. they buy organic stuff now. Like they didn't care. Like it, it wasn't even on their radar. And because I was such a champion of my values, they started to take it to heart. You know, my mom uses my stainless steel containers now. She, you know, uses reusable bags. She does all these things because she saw that it made me happier and I think she wanted some of that too. Mm. Um, so I just, you know. That's cool. I do what makes me feel good and hope that it inspires other people. In an ideal world, if you could have anything, what would happen with, I guess, products in general? You know, all these products are out there, food, clothing, all this stuff. like how to be structured so that we would be able to make better decisions. We wouldn't have to make decisions, you know, as consumers. They would just be like, here's the option. Yeah, Take I mean, it. it's, a, it's a loaded question. Of course. Um, first of all, I think there's like way too much <clears throat> shit out there. Because is, is cardboard okay then? Like a cardboard well, packaging box? it's like box what or? is okay and what's not okay. You know, right. like, I think like that as well is like a very large and loaded question. Um, but Got I think it. like one, there's just too much stuff. There's way too much stuff. We have too many choices. We're obsessed with consumption. We get bored really easily and we think we need more and more and more. So I think, you know, first of all, I'd like to shift our values away from consumption and more towards experience. Um, you know, how can we enjoy each other again mm -hmm. without needing things? How can we show our love and affection without physical materials? Um, and I think that's very important because I think it's something that very much is lost yeah. right now, especially in America. Um, but I, I would like for packaging to become obsolete or standardized or, you know, something where... Reusable. Yeah, it's just reusable, you know, and, and a lot of people say, well, doesn't that kill creativity? And, and for me, I say, you know, what is creativity? What is, your, what is your right as a creator, as an artist? You know, I think a lot of art and creativity could be masturbatory in a way. Like, if what you're creating is contributing to something that's totally detrimental for the environment, I think you need to check yourself and ask, is what I'm producing or creating necessary? And there's so many products out there right now mm -hmm. that aren't necessary. And I think we need to evaluate that. Right, there you go. Awesome. Hmm. What's the thing you're working on the most right now? We were talking before this about what you really are excited about or what you're into now, because this is kind of like phase one of your yeah. journey. Five years ago, this is the thing that gets talked about a lot in the press. But what's really, what are you really working on? I mean, mostly right now, just running my companies. I think, you know, I studied journalism in college for the first year, and then I was like, I'm going to do economics, and and I had, and then I studied politics and environmental science, and I thought I was going to be a politician because I thought that was the way to make large scale positive environmental change, and and that's my north star. That's what leads all of the decisions that I made, and I thought that that was the way. But then I learned about business, and I saw that business is like the thing that bisects all bureaucracy. Like you can get things done through business so much faster than you can do anything else. You can make decisions that no one even looks at twice. You know, you can, you can kind of, business is this weird thing where you can like do anything you want. It's like a free world in a way. You know, there, people say there's regulation, but like, you know, you, you have so many opportunities to exercise freedom and creativity and, and that can be very dangerous but it could also be super powerful. Um, so for me, I'm focused on building businesses that help to solve these large scale environmental problems that I'm seeing, you know, chipping away one thing at a time. So, so most of my time is dedicated towards building and growing these businesses. And then through that, I've, I've also learned that a lot of my time needs to be dedicated towards building and growing myself. Mm. In what ways? Um, Where do you get I to mean, grow the most? I burned out this winter. Mm. Um, you know, I, I took control of my company. I, I started Package Free with a partner, um, but I took control of it, really? you know, after the holidays. And wow. I was running three companies by myself for the first time. I'm 26, you know, there have been people far younger doing far more, but for me, you know, I, I didn't have a balance between working seven days a week and being in a relationship and having friends and a life and, and taking, you know, I forgot to eat all the time. I forgot to exercise, I forgot to sleep, and all of these things kind of snowballed. And I had this moment where I just like mm. broke. 
Wow. Um, and I realized, and like what I've dedicated so much of my energy towards now is one, of course, running my businesses and supporting all of the people that work for me. But two, like I, I can't do that unless I'm taking care of myself. And I, I learned that the hard way through through cracking. Um, so you know, I'm focused on eating well and yeah. loving myself and doing my mind and going to yoga, um, just simple things, but I lost it so easily. Mm. When did you realize you lost it? What, um, was the, what was the breaking point? Or was it more just like a feeling of I think like just relationships in my life yeah. kind of started changing. You know, I, I was getting in fights with people that mm. I wasn't getting in fights with before. Um, you know, I was just feeling sad all the time. Really? Yeah. Why do you think that? Because I didn't take care of myself, right? Like yeah. if you're not eating and you're not sleeping and you're not exercising and you're just working all the time, you forget that you're a person. Human being, yeah. Yeah. And I think that takes a toll eventually. And and that's what happened. And wow. and so like it just took like one <clears throat> snap, like one thing to happen and, and then I've just been changing my entire routine and it really has just changed like my entire life. I think I can be a better friend and yeah. you know I'm not in a relationship now but I think I could be a better partner retrospectively you know by knowing that it's necessary and and just like totally not up for dispute to, to be very selfish and take care of myself and you know the same goes with business relationships and being a boss yeah wow so do you feel like you were more giving to everyone else as opposed to yourself or just working so much that you never gave to yourself in general I think you know, taking over package free was a lot of responsibility. And, yeah. and for me, you know, it, it was just kind of like a, a survival mode. Like I, I just had so much more to do that I couldn't think of anything else right. but work. Yeah. Hmm. What advice would you give to female entrepreneurs in their 20s who are trying to start something, launch something, grow something? I mean... What's the most important things they should be aware of? I made hard stops for myself. Like I have to go to yoga every night at 7.30. I have to remember to buy groceries and eat meals. I have to remember to read things that improve and expand my mind and my thinking and to be really aware of my intentions and to talk to myself and to give myself mm -hmm. moments where I'm like in conversation with my body and my mind and I wasn't for so long and it's so easy not to be if you're someone who's super intense and driven and ambitious and I'm all of those things and because of that I forgot about myself and so any advice that I would give is like you know check yourself like daily be like am I feeling happy am I feeling um you know hungry am i feeling tired am i feeling overwhelmed then asking yourself why like i think therapy is amazing mm -hmm. you know talk to someone yeah well wow. it's a good realization yeah who is in your corner who's in your side is it your mom that you reach out to when you're going through this is there you have a friend do you have a yeah group i of mean people? it was also just a really hard year because my best friends all moved away this mm -hmm. year um, where they go la you know, 26 is kind of that year where like your life kind of shifts, people get in more serious relationships, jobs change, people kind of, you know, travel. And so I had to like start <coughs> putting myself out there more and making more friends and, you know, finding more people. And, and ultimately, you know, I need to be in charge of taking care of my own mind and taking care of my own emotions. And of course I have my mom and my, my family and my friends. Um, but, but I think mostly that, that responsibility does fall on myself and I yeah. need to be able to understand and accept and work with my my brain and my emotions um, and I'm very much trying to be intentional about teaching myself how to do that mm -hmm. Wow what do you think it's gonna take from you this year to get to the next level in your business and your personal life personal growth um, I think I'm trying to ask myself what's important to me right now and what's important to me right now is work um, so much more than doing things like building, you know, love relationships or, mm -hmm. you know, making lots of new friends. I, I'm really focused on work. Um, so I think in order for me to be the best at growing my businesses, I need to be really, really, really nice to myself. Mm -hmm. um, and Are you usually not nice to yourself? I think I'm good to myself, but I forget 
that I'm a person. <laughs> and I think that happens to a lot of people. I, I started doing research on entrepreneurs that you know get divorced when they start their companies or that break up with people or lose friends or get depressed and tired. Like this is a thing. Yeah. And I didn't have that many people that had businesses in my life that like could empathize, empathize or understand mm. what I was going through. Yeah. You know, and I have friends that have just like nine to five jobs that can go get drunk and go out and then they go back to work on Monday and I'm like, I can't do that. I'm working seven days a week. Um, so yeah, I just think like in order for me to accomplish my goal for this year of, of just growing my businesses, I really need to grow myself. Mm, I love that. That's cool. Um, anything else? Anything else you want to share? I've got a few final questions, but yeah. I don't know if there's anything else. Go for it. Going on? Okay, cool. Uh, this is called the three truths. Okay. Three truths. I ask this at the end I'm for gonna, everyone. Take a, take a drink. Take a, take a sip. sip of water before yes. I... Get ready. Do truth or dare. Uh, truth or dare, yes. Truth or dare. Have you had plastic on your body in the last week? No. Um, three truths. Imagine you've made all the changes and impacts you want to make in the world. Mm -hmm. This is the, and it's the end of your life. Uh, maybe you're 200 years old. We've extended your lifespan now. Some technology, you're as old as you want to be, and it's the last day for you. And you've made all the impacts that you could possibly make. The environment, your mission, it's come true. Mm -hmm. You've done it all. You've also, you know, written tons of articles and books and movies. You've done whatever you want to do. Cool. But for whatever reason, sounds awesome. It sounds great, right? But for whatever reason, all the information you've put out in the world has been erased. So no one has access to your videos or your content or your, your words anymore. But you have a piece of paper and a pen that is not plastic that you get to write down on. A quill. A quill. <laughs> just a strand of ink that you get to write on a feather. And you dip it in the ink in a glass jar, dip it in, and... Um, you get to write down three things you know to be true about all of your experiences, which I call three truths. So these would be your lessons, truths that you would share with the world, since this is all they have to be remembered by you. What would you write down as your three truths? I feel like I should have prepared for this. It's all good. Whatever's on your, whatever's on your heart, from what um, you have an understanding of in your life right now, what would those be? The biggest lessons, biggest truths. I guess the things that have always guided me are, are, you know, it's so important and necessary to live your values and to ask yourself, you know, what is it that you care about and are you living your life in a way that aligns with that? So that would be the first one. Mm. Um, my mom always told me that there's nothing in life that's permanent except for death, which, you know, made me realize that you can always change and grow and not be afraid of quitting or moving on or failing or anything like there's always something else mm. except for death mm -hmm. um that would be the second one um third one that's harder i guess I would say, for me at least, for my truth, it's necessary for me to check in with myself every day and to have a really clear idea of what my values are to kind of go back to the first point. So, mm. you know, am I living my values? But the third point would be, what are my values? What are the things that I do care about? What are my intentions? And, and I think a truth would be that those change all the time. And it's so necessary to ask yourself mm. what you care about and what makes you happy and what makes you excited every single day so you can constantly be checking back in with that. Um, I think that for me is the only way that I sustain my happiness. That's great, that's great. Um, where can we connect with you online? Uh, the website, social media. Yeah, I guess there are lots of places Come to your now. store in Brooklyn. You can come hang out with me in Brooklyn at Package Free Shop. Um, yeah. You can read all about how to live a zero waste lifestyle on trashesfortossers.com or my YouTube channel, which is just Trashes for Tossers. I have my other company, The Simply Co. Um, and yeah, Package Free Shop. All those places. I Everywhere. will hear you and you hear see you. you. I look at everything. You. I read everything. Where do you hang out the most? Instagram? Yeah, I Tr love Instagram. Trash is for Tossers. At Trash is for Tossers, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So go hang out with her there. 
scroll back a few months, you'll see a photo of her standing on top of trash with me next to you. Yeah, we, we hugged on trash. Yes, we did. <laughs> trash that was being tossed. Yeah. Um, well, before I asked... It was the, symbolic. It was, it was, exactly. Before I ask the final question, I acknowledge you for a moment for your mission. I think it's so empowering and inspiring okay. to see someone of your age with uh, a commitment and a dedication to your values, who is so, you're so committed to doing whatever it takes that you can do. You're putting out uh, content, you're creating physical goods, you have a store, you're doing everything in your power right now to get the message out there and support people in living this lifestyle. So I want to acknowledge you for your inspiration constantly, you. for you not judging me with having plastic in my place, Never. but also inspiring me. You know, I have a glass bottle container now, so uh, one step at a time for me. But honestly, and also being an inspiring young, you know, female entrepreneur to show other women what's possible and how they anything. can create it. Anything's possible, yeah. So I acknowledge you for all of it. Thank it's, you. It's amazing. Um, final question is, what's your definition of greatness? Living your values. Lauren Singer, thank you for coming on. Appreciate it. Thank you.